In this video, we're going to be discussing how to use our low power troubleshooting to figure out what is wrong with this engine. Also, destruction of the week segment. So pulling the valve covers on this engine here, we're gonna find that we're, wait a second, we haven't done any troubleshooting yet. We need to find why we're pulling this valve cover. So a customer brought in this 3126 cat and had a complaint, and that complaint was low power and poor acceleration. So these were what they wrote down, low power obviously, uh, no smoke, no white or black exhaust smoke, which is a good thing. Also they said there's no check engine light. That's what they said. So first thing I do is I check four codes. Now they had an injector current fault for cylinder four with 255, which is the max occurrences. Also, they had some overspeeds and high coolant temp warnings, but these were about 100 engine hours old. So I'm going to go after that injector current fault first. So I always like to look at our sensors and make sure they are reading correctly first before I do anything else. And they look to be working, and I like to test the throttle pedal. You can see it goes to 100% and back to zero. So that's good. So now what we're going to be doing is checking the circuit for our injector solenoids. So if you're using CAD ET or any other software that will do this, you're going to go to Diagnostic Tests, and you're going to want to find one that says Injector Solenoid Test. So what this will do is it will basically pop every injector solenoid and see that it is pulling the same amount of current as the other ones. So you're looking for an OK or a not OK. So it's testing each one. Hey, look at that, number four, not OK, open. So that means that somewhere in the circuit, the circuit is not complete. It's not shorted, it's an open circuit. So finally pulling our valve cover here again. And what are we gonna find? We're looking for any damage to the wiring or the injector itself could be the cause, but we don't know yet. So we're gonna look at number four. Hey, wait a second. Now it looks like the injector's not plugged in. You can see the little metal retaining clip for the connector. You can see it there on number three, how it's supposed to be. And it's actually just not plugged in. And these are reman injectors. You can tell because they have a 10R number. So someone's been in here and plugged these in probably fairly recently, but this one didn't actually get plugged in correctly. So I need to inspect the clip, make sure we don't need to put a new harness or a new plug end on it, and it looks to be in good condition. It just probably wasn't plugged in correctly the first time. So before you put your valve cover back on, you're going to want to check all your solenoids again. So now they're showing all okay, and that's good. So put a new gasket on the valve cover, put it back on, and running the engine here, making sure nothing looks weird, all our pressures look okay. So now we need to test drive the truck and see what the power is. Now, unfortunately, this picture isn't very good, but this engine built 20 PSI of boost. Now, depending on what horsepower rating this engine is, this was a higher horsepower one, the boost can be anywhere from 18 to 28. But what you need to do is you need to go on something called TMI, and that does not stand for too much information. It stands for technical marketing information. Every engine cat builds a dyno. And on the dyno, this engine made 52 inches of mercury pressure, which half of that is PSI. So 26 PSI is what it should make. So this still had other problems and was not making full power. So put the charge air cooler tester on it. And you can see we got a leak because when you close the valve, all the air leaks out. So we're looking for or listening for a leak. Hear any air leak? I sure do. The CAC was cracked heavily and had a pretty big boost leak. So just goes to show you that there can be multiple problems on any low power complaints. Not always one thing. And you need to troubleshoot the system systematically. On to our next segment. So what we're looking at here is a C15 turbo, and this engine came in for injector cups. It had fuel in the coolant. And you see anything weird about this turbo? Well, I sure do. It's got two huge cracks in the exhaust housing here, and it's starting to separate from the exhaust manifold. Now, we called the customer, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I know it's cracked. Now, I'm not sure what he's waiting for to get it changed, because the last thing you want is for this thing to blow out in the middle of nowhere on a Saturday night. But... 
He was waiting to get a change for some reason. Hope you enjoyed the video.